So you lived in Miami your whole life. What would you say the vibe of Miami is? So if you live here, you'll understand that culture and like just the creativity of the city is huge. It's um, they talk about the United States being like a giant like melting pot. Mm-hmm. But I would say Miami is a melting pot just amongst like a lot of Latin culture and Italian culture and depending on how how far north you go because if you just reside in deep Miami then you're just talking about just a lot of it's a melting pot but uh, in regards of just a lot of different Latin countries so you're talking for example I'm from Honduras it's a center it's a it's in Central America so in my uh, but being someone that was born in uh, like not born raised in Hialeah Hialeah is predominantly Cuban so you're talking about uh, this kid from Honduras who goes to this uh, this uh, school full of predominant Cubans, so you start mixing everything you know and understand with what they know. Yeah. And if you go even more to another city called Doral, you're talking about Venezuelans. The nickname is Dorazuela. So now okay. you have a whole other culture. Then you have Little Haiti, which is actually Winwood, which is around the time around where we met. So the Haitians, and yeah. you go down Little Havana. Little Havana also mixes with Little Dr. So I like, it's just the beauty in it. Just at any, any, anywhere you go, you're going to just hear a, like an array of accents, a di- a different forms of slangs that it were air, where I could say something and it'll mean like either something completely offensive in, in another culture or it just won't make sense to them. Yeah. Per se. And the creativity portion of that just comes from that culture. Just you've seen, you, uh, like you said earlier, you went to you stayed in the design district the design district used to be just an extension of winwood before it completely got renovated and if, if you've been in winwood during the day you get to see all these beautiful arts and it's not only in winwood if you go to like havana Ocho, it's all over the city all, there's like art and murals and bright colors everywhere yeah that's that's the beauty like just people bring and those are all done by different different artists from just different backgrounds so that's yeah. beautiful too. And there's even, I believe if you go a little southern, a little south by Kendall, there's like a sculpture work where people do a lot of welding and okay. these magnificent sculptures as well. And in that, it doesn't even have to be just art in the sense of just building or painting something. You can go to the gardens, the botanical gardens where people like lay out their art with plants and just capture it with photography and so forth. But it's just a very big culture city. That, that's what I've always liked. Like you will never meet, you will never meet someone of the same background per se. And you always have something new to learn from someone. Yeah. It's uh, what you describe. what I have thought of it in my head. Is this accurate at all? It seems like it acts as the capital of the Caribbean in a way. Where it's kind of like the New York City of the whole Caribbean and cultures around like Latin. So, so normally, so let's say the Caribbean. So when individuals migrate from the Caribbean, so you're talking about like DR, Cuba, Puerto Rico, normally the two, uh, like, I don't want to say easiest place to migrate to, but more so just, uh, I want to say, I guess I could say easiest just because family, they may already have family there, is either New York. And you see, that's where you see a lot of like the Puerto Ricans and like a lot of Dominicans. Dominic, yeah, Dominicans in New York. I'm sure I noticed yeah. that. Bigger than, but in Miami, you remember for Cuba and and Haiti and the Caribbean, in general, Miami from the, the tip to the Caribbean is only about 90 miles. Yeah. So that's where you get this. And back in the day when you had the wet, uh, wet foot, dry foot uh, enacted, it was just a means of, uh, salvation from like a, pol- a political a political a lot of them were political refugees yeah come here. so a lot of individuals took that chance and they decided to build a life here when you have individuals like for me who come from central america or, or south america it's it's a uh, miami is just still seen like as safe grounds because it's basically coming to a whole different country trying to build a whole new life but you want to yeah. be surrounded by people that necessarily will make that necessarily that will necessarily make you feel welcome sorry yeah but 
it is i would i would agree with that it's just kind of like uh most people call south florida like northern cuba i've heard a lot of my cubans friends say that it's just northern cuba there's a big cuban culture there that's for yeah, sure it definitely is the, it definitely it definitely cuban culture is the predominant one here for sure it has a lot of influence yeah. on, on the city which isn't bad like i said like i grew up in highly so i've learned to appreciate the culture a lot it's different in yeah. mine yeah but the whole point is just you it's better to it's it's always great to appreciate something that you're not used to so that's why yeah. it's just been big yeah something i notice about besides the weather the weather i'm sure helps lift everybody's <laughs> moods all the time coming from it's like 60 and chilly in chicago right now okay. uh <laughs> but i wouldn't there's say a spirit yeah. to the city that i notice and that's it's like cool to be a part of and to see when i was down there yeah so obviously like individual like our our weather is great i as much as sometimes i can complain about it being too hot because there's days here you walk out and it's just like you have to like un like rip your your shirt off from your your skin just because of the humidity you're very like it's very beautiful but it's just it's nice to walk outside and i always thought i always use the reference of toy story skies you've ever seen you've seen the movie i'm assuming right toy story toy story yeah so you know how on the walls it's just blue with just nice clouds out so i always i, so. I always so i always reference that because whenever you walk out like 99 of the time you're just gonna have this nice blue sky with either either no clouds or clouds outside and it just makes the day overall it makes you want to have like a productive day it makes you want to just go out there and just okay like i don't want to stay inside I, it's a beautiful day I'll let, let's just go out and do something whether it's i may just drive to the local panera or starbucks and decide to study outside or just to my the local park and go for a walk whatever it may be you are right the, the, the spirit is just overall lifted it's just doesn't the whole idea of staying inside at that point is just like it, it it's it just sucks it, like you would be doing yourself a favor by going out at that point so this is this is like an interesting dynamic because chicago chicago we have like maybe three months of like tremendous weather and mm -hmm. it's the most magical time in the city the summer of chicago and like everything is outside we we have the lake here we have this lakefront path that's just all parks the entire length of the city and everybody is just like all outside and and there's probably this appreciation of it what we often wonder is like with all the pent up energy throughout you know the the fall we enjoy the seasons here but like in the winter especially like, how do you, for me, I think it helps creativity to like be stuck inside and you're like forced to do this stuff. And I wonder people that live in the warm weather, like Los Angeles or Miami, how do you, how do you not be outside every day and like not work, you know, like, how do you, does that like, make sense? Are you saying like, how do I just go out and then just, uh eventually are you saying more so like so you were saying like when you stay stuck inside uh you don't necessarily want to do it is i'm sorry i got kind of confused in that so you're more so saying when you i was so like how do you if the weather is great mm -hmm. most of the time how do you how does it work with creativity? Like, do you think it helps or hinders creativity? If you always want to be outside and like doing stuff outside. So I, I, I think it, I think it definitely helps it. Cause like you said, like if I always want to be outside and I always want to be, uh, so when I say I want to be outside in a sense, like I just want to be out and about and like doing something, being productive. Mm -hmm. Cause you want to take, you want to take advantage of the day. Um, necessarily, at least for me, uh let's say like when it drops down like when winter comes around november and we get like our brisk like one week of like uh it being chilly or it falls below the 70s because if you live in miami and it falls below once it hits that like 68 69 degree mark we're just that's it like fully bundled up just stay one to stay inside <laughs> like, it's, it's 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 absurd like you'll see like people will come out with like their, their fur coats or like the big puffer jackets like 
people just really do not know how to act like once they go there so that causes people to say but if at least for me if i know it's a great day outside and the weather is warm once it makes my product productivity just one like completely increase i want to go out there do something do something either better myself and when i want to better myself my thoughts get going so that just allows me to think of all these different things that i want to do or wish to do or like plan to do so i guess it just to answer your question definitely boosts it it allows people just to now have this um I want to say comfortable environment, but more so just like this good atmosphere where they can just think think uh, beyond from what the capability of the of the comfort of their home. 